all right guys welcome back to another video on the super duper world of sports and this is week four power rankings uh we had a lot of interesting games this week as usual uh, definitely definitely a pretty interesting start to the season uh thus far and let's get into the rankings number 32 uh the texans once again facing the la uh la chargers this next week they're now 0-2 and 1 after having lost to the bears by a field goal um, it, things are just not coming together, man. Brandon Cooks isn't able to produce enough from the many targets he's getting, and that's a real big problem for the Texans. Number 31, New York Jets uh, are going to Pittsburgh to face the Steelers this week. They're now 1-2 and two after losing to the Bengals. Uh, I think it was pretty expected in the Bengals. Uh, everybody expected them to bounce back. It was bound to happen, and with Zach Wilson coming back this next week, uh, we'll have to see how that'll affect Garrett Wilson's usage, uh, how if he'll lean more on Elijah Moore like he did last year. We'll have to see that. Number 30 is the Washington Commanders facing the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. And they're now 1-2 and two after having lost to the Philadelphia Eagles pretty badly, honestly. Um, they really only got a safety and a touchdown on route to 24 to 8 loss, 8 to 24 loss. But, um, you know, Carson Wentz continues to be mediocre. He's putting up pretty good passing numbers, but his uh, interceptions are once again getting a little out of control as they usually do. And that is of, that is of prime concern to me at least. Number 29 is the Carolina Panthers versus the Arizona Cardinals this week uh, at home. They're also now 1-2. and two. Uh, Not a good game last week. It, not something they want to cherish. Christian McCaffrey is not getting involved enough in the passing game, and that's a problem. Baker Mayfield's got to you know, fix that somehow. And the defense has been all right, but yeah, Christian McCaffrey's got to be more of a receiver as he usually is. Number 28, Seattle Seahawks, also 1-2, and two, are facing the Detroit Lions in Detroit this week. Uh, definitely not an easy win, uh, as it usually could be for most teams against the Lions. In past years, the Lions have really toughened up this season, as we've seen with our very eyes. Seattle Seahawks do have, I, I believe... They do have quite potential to win this, but I think they're going to lose to the Detroit Lions in this one. Uh, Gina Smith has been, been exceptional since the uh, since the um, the first uh, for since week one, and I don't believe that that's going to continue anytime soon. Number twenty-seven, Chicago Bears at New York Giants. They're actually now two and one. Uh, they won this last last week against the Texans, twenty-three to twenty. Um. Two bad teams, kind of. New York Giants are coming off a loss on Monday night to the Dallas Cowboys. And so the momentum is on the Chicago Bears side. But the passing, I mean, they're passing way too rarely, the Bears are. They're relying a bit too much on the run. Uh, that's, a not, that's not a good thing for any team. If you're rely, You can rely a good bit on the run, but not too much. You gotta have some passing ability as well. And it's going to be tough for me to put them above where they are now until they can show me that they can both sufficiently pass and run the ball. Number 26 is the 1-2 and two Atlanta Falcons who are going up against the Cleveland Browns at home this week in uh, week four. I don't... The Browns' defense will be very stifling to this offense, I assume. Cordero Patterson will continue to carry them. Cordero Patterson, Drake London, Kyle Pitts. You know, got, a, got a good bit of good weapons there. And Marcus Mariota hasn't proved exceptional, but he's been able to uh, lead them to a couple of uh, tough, you know, uh, close games. At least 25 points in all the games so far. And the defense has been uh, nothing remarkable so far. In the top 25, we have top, or we have the Steelers facing the New York Jets. The Steelers are also 1-2 and two now. Uh, they lost this past week to the Browns on Thursday Night Football. 
definitely made worse by that last second garbage time defensive touchdown by the Browns. But um, this week, Pat Fryermuth was only involved in like the last few minutes of the fourth quarter against the Browns. That should not be happening at all. He should be involved every quarter, every um, possession. He's got to be there, man. Pat Fryermuth is good, and that's got to show. Otherwise, Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris uh, showing the first real, like, very good outings of the season, uh, breaking their true potential. Mitch Trubisky has sufficed, as that's all I can say, but hasn't been the best. Number 24, New York Giants facing the Chicago Bears this week, coming off a loss against the Dallas Cowboys, as we talked about earlier, ruining their potential uh, 3-0 start so they're not 2-1. and I think they do have a little bit of upper hand here against the Chicago Bears. Um, as we talked about earlier, the passing woes of the Chicago Bears are undeniable. It's it's very, very concerning and bad. Um, it's it's tough sight to watch them pass that badly and that rarely. Both. And Daniel Jones has sh- continued to show us uh, his dual threat ability. And Saquon Barkley is back to his 2019 form. I don't see any reason why the Giants lose this game. 23 is the 1-2 and two New England Patriots, and they're playing at Lambeau Field with Brian Hoyer as their starting quarterback, most likely. Um, yeah, that spells trouble all over it. Playing in Lambeau, first of all, that's that you know you're bound for a loss pretty much. And second of all, you have Brian Hoyer as your quarterback. Um, not ideal, in my opinion. Some say he's the GOAT. I used to agree, <laughs> but not anymore. Uh, definitely, yeah, definitely a huge disadvantage for the Patriots here. Number 22, the only un- the only uh, winless team, excuse me, in the league that is remaining, the Las Vegas Raiders, actually. They're going to face a divisional rival, familiar foe here, the Denver Broncos. Um in at at home so i got the home advantage josh jacobs and josh jacobs definitely decided to show up against the titans got um more efficiency more yards more more yards more importantly but the defense wasn't able to hold up man derrick henry ran all over the raiders and i think with the combination of melvin gordon and javante williams they're going to have to do something, something to limit that run game of the Broncos. And they have to worry about Russell Wilson, Corlin Sutton. They got to worry about Jerry Judy. They got to worry about Albert Aquegbanam. But they got some weapons of their own, of course. You got Derek Carr, Devonta Adams. Uh, has been frustrating to not see them connect as smoothly as we'd, expect, we'd expected. But that should uh, continue to... You know, uh, to should, the chemistry should continue to grow back uh, as the season progresses. Number 21, New Orleans Saints, who are playing the Minnesota Vikings in the first London game of the 2022 season. Getting a little international NFL game uh, action going on here. So they're 1-2. and two. They just lost brutally to the Carolina Panthers. Uh, it, they coughed up a lot to the Carolina Panthers' defense. Alvin Kamara coughed up a fumble. Um, Chris Olave had to carry because Michael Thomas didn't do that well. Um, and now uh, they have a little bit of an easier matchup with the Minnesota Vikings here. Uh, defensively, I mean. But they're going to have to do something to keep up with that offense. Justin Jefferson hasn't been as um, dominant as as of late in the past two weeks or so. But they... That doesn't mean they just count them out. It's Justin Jefferson. Number 20 is the 1-1-1 one, one, and one Indianapolis Colts. They're facing a divisional foe, the Tennessee Titans, in Indianapolis. So I believe um, the Colts, you know, coming off this interesting win against the Kansas City Chiefs, I, I mean, I don't know if it's a fluke or legitimate they lost to the Jaguars. They tied the Texans. 
And so I have... I'm not sure if they're going to win this one against the Tennessee Titans, man, especially with the Titans coming off the win against Raiders. Number 19, Arizona Cardinals are 1-2, and two, coming off a loss against the Rams, 20-12. to 12. They're facing the Carolina Panthers in, in uh, Charlotte. So kind of an advantage for them here on both sides of the ball. I think the Arizona Cardinals take this one easily. Zach Ertz has proved to be Quite an asset for the Cardinals once again. And Kyler Murray should be able to carry them to this win. Number 18, the Jacksonville Jaguars have jumped all the way to number 18. Two and one. They beat the Chargers by 28 points, 38 to 10. Uh, given Justin Herbert did have a you know rib problem. And Rashawn Slater is now out for the season. Jalen Guyton is as well. And that is what forced me to put the Chargers right above the Jacksonville Jaguars sneak peek at number 17. Anyway, back to the Jaguars. They're facing the Philadelphia Eagles, who are ranked very highly in my power rankings. Um, this, Unless they put up absolute bombs, unless they conduct on absolute bombs and have such a perfect game, they're not going to win this against the Philadelphia Eagles. Just based on how the Philadelphia Eagles offense has been gelling as of late, even though the Jaguars' offense has been starting to fire up very much as of uh, recently. Number 17, we just talked about Los Angeles Chargers. They're facing the Houston Texans in Houston. They're 1-2 and two after losing to the Jaguars uh, by four scores. Uh, not 80 points, but 28 points. Four scores. Yeah. But, you know, with Rashawn Slater now out and Jalen Guyton as well, that's a big blow to uh, Justin Herbert because that's his blind side that is gone now. And that's tough. It, it, it's really I, it's a really bad situation for them offensively. Uh, until Keenan Allen comes back, it's hard to tell where they're going to be, man. And the midway, um, midway mark, number 16, one and two Detroit Lions coming off a pretty devastating loss against the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Dan Campbell owned that loss, man. I I like him. He's a great coach. Very passionate, at least. Uh, They're facing the uh, Seattle Seahawks at home. So, as I said, um, Monroe St. Brown uh, should be a very big factor, as he always has been this season. DeAndre Swift probably won't play, so Jamal Williams will get most of the carries, if not all of them. And Jared Goff has been able to connect pretty well. But the defense has to hold up, hold DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett um, down. If they don't, it's going to be tough for them. Number 15, Dallas Cowboys. They're 2-1 and one after beating the New York Giants, and they're facing another divisional, um, divisional opponent. It's the Washington Commanders. And they're staying home in Arlington to face them. After the momentum gained from the New York Giants win, I think definitely it's going to be this is going to be a win for the Cowboys. Cooper Rush has been uh, ex- excellent, at least uh, to say the least. Now, uh, ever since the Bengals game, he's been excellent. Uh, has carried the team on his back almost. C.D. Lamb has been his prime target. You have uh, Noah Brown, who is getting very involved as well. Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, continuing to do their thing. And the defense held up quite well uh, against both those about both the Bengals and Giants. And the Commanders' offense is pretty lackluster, so we'll have to see who comes out on top there. Number 14, 2 and 1 are the Cleveland Browns coming off a TNF win against the Steelers. And they're facing the uh, traveling to Atlanta to face the Atlanta Falcons, who are going to lose this game to the Browns. <laughs> that's my honest opinion. Uh, the Browns are going to win the defensive battle, and that's all they need. Nick Chubb's going to carry them on the ground. Uh, Mari Cooper will come in at time to time. David Njoku's there. That's all you need. It's it's going to be an easy win for the Browns. Number 13, 2-1 and one are the Denver Broncos, and they're traveling to Las Vegas to face the Raiders, who are coming off a pretty horrible loss to the Tennessee Titans. 
a lost on a last second uh, two point conversion. That's tough for them. But either way, uh, the Denver Broncos, after their win against the 49ers last week, be it by one point, I know. I mean, sure, they only got one touchdown, but so did the Niners. I mean, their defense held up quite well against them. Uh, and based on how the Raiders have been playing thus far, I can see that continuing. And the Broncos have high potential to pull out a win here. Number 12, Tennessee Titans. Of course, you were just talking about coming off a win against the Raiders. They're still only 1-2, and two, but they're starting to get rolling. Titans offense is back, in my opinion, and that's why they're almost at, in the top 10. And they're uh, in an away game against the Indianapolis Colts, which should be a back-and-forth game, in my opinion. Indianapolis did beat uh, Kansas City. They did beat Kansas City. And that leads me to believe that they can put up a pretty good fight against the 10T Titans as well. I don't see why not. Sure, of course they lost to the other two AFC South teams. But I think you shouldn't count them out just for losing to them and beating the because they beat the Chiefs. So it'll be tough. It, kind of a tough decision for me. I think the Titans will actually win this game. Number 11 are the San Francisco 49ers. Facing the L.A. Rams on Monday Night Football. It's a little primetime action. They're 1-2. and two. They just came off a loss against the Denver Broncos on Sunday Night Football. Which lowered their morale quite a bit. Debo Samuel uh, produced all right. Again, he's not... He was the leading receiver. And is not getting as many rushes as we thought. But... He is. He I mean he is very involved in in the uh, run game as well, so that's good. Jimmy Garoppolo is able to facilitate pretty well. Uh, George Kittle is back now, so that's that's a big advantage for them. But I still think they take the L to Los Angeles here. I just don't see it possible that they win against the Los Angeles Rams and keep up with that offense. Into the top ten, Cincinnati Bengals. They're back in the top ten, baby. One and two. Uh, first win against the Jets. I get it's the Jets, okay? But Bengals, they're coming back, man. It had to happen at some point. It's not like they just fell off from last year. I mean, they're the Super Bowl team, so you can't just fall off like that. Um, starting to get their ways back. 27-12 to 12 win against the Jets, and they're facing the Miami Dolphins at home on Thursday Night Football, which I believe could go either way in this case. Uh, of course, I want to root for my Bengals, but Miami Dolphins haven't showed any signs of mercy recently. I think it could go either way, really. Uh, two very high-powered offenses, and Dolphins' defense takes a little bit of an edge there, but it could be either game, either uh, either team's game. And at number nine is the 2-1 and one Minnesota Vikings. They're playing the New Orleans Saints in Great Britain in London. Definitely... A fun match that we're going to have to witness here. Uh, as we talked about earlier with the Saints, Justin Jefferson should be uh, a huge problem. Marshawn Lattimore, Justin Jefferson, that'll be the matchup to watch all game long. Uh, they're 2-1, and one, though, the Vikings are, uh, but are definitely in... A g- they are having... A pretty good momentum rise after winning against the Lions. And if they can shut down the Saints' offense, that's all they need. Uh, it's going to be a win for them. Number eight is Sunday Night Football, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're facing the Kansas City Chiefs, and they're 2-1. and one, Just coming off a loss against the two-point loss against the Green Bay Packers. And that was a tough loss. Uh, but this is a Super Bowl rematch. I don't... The only reason I think they'll lose, because is because the Kansas City Chiefs want revenge from Super Bowl uh, 54. They really want Super Bowl 54 revenge, and I think they're going to get it in this game. Uh, no matter how well the Bucks play, I think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to throb them. Number seven, Baltimore Ravens facing the Buffalo Bills. Very, very tough matchup for them here. Uh, two and one. 
uh, coming off a win against the Patriots. So uh, definitely a good momentum boost heading into this. Both are 2-1, and one, actually, because the Buffalo Bills lost to the Dolphins. And Lamar Jackson should be a huge problem for the Bills defense, especially because they're very undermanned. Uh, Micah Hyde is out for the season. Jordan Poyer will be out for a little bit. Uh, they've got a ton of rookies and inexperienced uh, defensive backs back there. Number six, Chiefs, as we talked about, sending that football at Tampa Bay. Uh, might not be in Tampa because of Hurricane Fiona, but we'll see. It, the Tampa Bay is still the home team. Two and one are the Chiefs. They just lost to the Indianapolis Colts. But again, they'll want revenge against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They want it was bitter, bitter loss for them. Thirty-one to nine. They w- they'll want to repeat that, but switch the team's scores. So hopefully Patrick Mahomes and Co are able to do that. Number five, Los Angeles Rams. Uh, they're going over to Santa Clara to face the 49ers on Monday Night Football. Two and one. Um, most recently, win against the Arizona Cardinals, another divisional rival. And Cooper Cup was actually surprisingly uh, limited in that game. Got, I think, forty. He only got forty-four receiving yards, which is uh, unlike him mostly but definitely uh, a matchup to watch is that uh, um, Debo Samuel and Jalen Ramsey uh, matchup to watch there but the Rams uh, with their offense and high power defense should be able to pull this one out number four are the Green Bay Packers and they're facing the New England Patriots most recently they're coming off a win against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and they wanted that win, man. They wanted that win. Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady. That was a good one. Now this one is Aaron Rodgers versus Brian Hoyer. Should be easy, easy win for them. One, because it's Lambeau. And two, because it's Brian Hoyer. So that's my take. Number three. The 3-0 and Miami Dolphins. Only two undefeated teams left in the league. And the Miami Dolphins are one of them. And they're... Traveling to Cincinnati at Paycor Stadium to face the Bengals. Thursday night football. Primetime action. Tua Tagovailoa, Jalen Waddle, and Tyree Kill have been flowing like water. <laughs> I mean, they've been flowing very well. Definitely, uh, you know, definitely one of the top tier teams in this league. And that's why I put them in number three. <clears throat> Almost. If they win this game... They have a strong case for number two or even number one. Number two are the Buffalo Bills, though. Uh, even though they lost to the Dolphins, I mean, it's the Buffalo Bills, man. I mean, I know they're under man a little bit, but that's the that's actually the reason I put them at number two and not number one. Um, number one, you'll see in a little bit. Two and one, uh, that one is of course the Dolphins' loss. They're going to Baltimore this week. Lamar Jackson. Rashad Bateman, and Devin DuVernay. Limit those three, and you'll have a win. If not, I can't do anything about that. I mean, Josh Allen, no matter how well he performs, if you can't contain Jackson, Bateman, and DuVernay, you're done for. And at number one, the Philadelphia Eagles. The other undefeated team, they're a 3-0 And they're facing the Jacksonville Jaguars at home. Uh, Even though the Jaguars are coming off a huge, huge win against the Chargers, uh, it's going to be a huge, huge defeat for them uh, in Philadelphia because we've seen how um, unbelievable the Philadelphia team has been. Offensively and defensively, there's no reason they lose this game. Absolutely no way they do. So yeah, that's that's my power rankings for this week, guys. I'll be back with week five power rankings next uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. And yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you to and I'll see you in the next.